Today, I'm here with Pro Football Hall of Famer, class of 2018. True. And Black College Football Hall of Famer, class of 2014. Yes. Mr. Robert Brazil. Uh, and we are here today to do reflections with a Hall of Famer. Uh, my name is Adrian Allison. I'm the Chief Relationship Officer here. And it is my honor to just hear a little bit from you about um, your reflections, your, especially as we um, wind down Black History Month. Um, one of the things that uh, is pervasive in uh, the story of Black history is perseverance. True. And as I had the opportunity to get to know you and to study and reflect on your career, your your life is a story of perseverance. And in fact, you as a young man born in the South. Yes, raised in the South. Raised in the South. Um, you certainly more than any, more than a lot of people understand what it takes to persevere to, to reach the success that you've reached. And so let's talk a little bit about that. You born in? I was born in Mobile in a little town called Pritchett, Alabama, Adrian. And during that time, and during the years that I was growing up in Pritchett, there was a time when I was put in a position that I didn't like, mm -hmm. you know. The federal government told me I had to leave an all black school and go to a white school. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, your dad driving by that high school every day, your mother working at another black high school, and you being sit on bus to an all white school. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in that all white school on that first that first bus, bus drive, I really got so mad mm -hmm. at my mom and dad. But I knew they wasn't sending me there for a reason. They was abiding by the federal law. And I knew the best of me had to come out mm. because I don't think nobody at that school knew me. That's why I was Brazil. I was yeah. called so many names. I'm that sure we, you were. We, yeah. we can't discuss the names I was called. It because I, but I had to do what we're here for, to persevere over that. What made, what, 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 what? So talk a little bit about, um, the, per, the, the, the characteristics and traits that mom and dad saw that knew you were gonna per persevere. What did they put in you? Because certainly you 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 went there, but they knew their baby was gonna be all right, even though it was gonna be hard for you. Yeah, you know, I guess I do, the main thing about the age of the faith that we yeah. had, you know, started a new Light Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. They did not send a criminal out there. They didn't send a bad mm -hmm. boy out there. They sent a kid that's out there that's willing to learn and want to represent them first of all, and myself. And so if I had to do it, you know, the one of the first thing you, you learn as a kid in Bible school is to turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not you that they talking to. Listen with a dead ear, but with an open heart. And that's what I took in that school that day. But I'm gonna promise you, the fear was there. Sure. You know, I was scared, but it pushed me in a way that I needed to be pushed, Adrian. Now, I did not want to be the laughing stock of the class. I didn't want to be the fun part. I want to be the smartest kid. Mm. I want my GPA to be as high as the one that's in that high school. I want to be the best football player. And this is the thing that got me over because they said, well, he's good looking, mm -hmm. he's black, mm -hmm. he's smart, he's fast, and he's a good kid. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. I mean, and at the end of the day, you left them no doubt. So if, if, if they were going to have anything against you, you didn't leave them any room no. to have something, right? So you, you weren't gonna be able to label me. The only thing you could label me would be based on my skin. But other than that, That's it. you That's couldn't it. label me for nothing else because I'm gonna show out and show up in every scenario every that you scenario put that me my in. Parents were sending Absolutely. Me out to go to school. They were sending me to go to school and to prove to, to this world, not only to that this town that it can be done. God didn't put us on this path to do the things that was going on. Uh, we had to face for no reason. He wanted you to go to these things. It was that way it let me. Yeah. That's what we're sitting here. I'm sitting there like with a gold jacket with you at the Black College and <laughs> Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's how it's so fun. this is what I, I want to thank my parents for. You know, I turned 70. Mm. And on my birthday, 
I drove over to my parents' house, and they was waiting on me in the swing to take me out for my birthday. And I looked at them and said, y'all don't understand the gift that y'all have already given me. Y'all giving me the foundation for eternal life. Mm, amen. That, that's the best thing yeah. that y'all could give me, yeah. the foundation to go the right way, do the right thing, say the right thing, and be with the right people. So thank y'all. Yeah, amen. And uh, um, I, I imagine this is one of the other things that we know as people, African Americans in this country, and in that school, when you were there, you had, you had, you were around a whole bunch of white folks, right? But the question is, is we know that even though there was name calling, right, and all that stuff, we know that there were people inside the school yes. that ultimately came on board to help you persevere. Yes, my right? team, my teammates, my class. Yeah. After they find out, you know, you know, after you get into something and find out this is not what this is going mm -hmm. out to be. There's nothing wrong with this kid. This kid got some jeans that came from pennies. He got a shirt <laughs> that came from Kmart. <laughs> he got some shoes that I want mm -hmm. because, you know, my parents worked, both worked hard and still would provide for us for the things that we needed, not what we want, just what we mm -hmm. needed. And we was well prepared. So you win these kids over, then all of a sudden you win the school over, you win the city over. And now they got a Hall of Fame in Mobile from that same. I know school. that's right. That's that's so 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 you go there. So you're um, an all star. You're 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 showing out. Did you play both sides? Both both yes, ways. Yes, offense and defense. Would you play on offense? Tight end. Tight end. I was a tight end. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now you now you're a tight end. You're a linebacker. You're showing out in high school, and now it's time to choose a school. Adrian. Now this is the fun part, and this is when I think the Lord touched my mom. Mm -hmm. Okay, in my senior year, I was, you know, blue chipper. Nobody, everybody in the SEC wanted Rock and Field. Everybody, you can't name a college from LSU to Auburn, Alabama, everybody. In my senior year, eight game, we eight no. I kick off and I break this off. You kick off? What do you mean yeah, you kick off? I was a kicker. You, that's, I what I you. that's what I so, thought you said. That's what I thought you said. You kicked off. On the opening kickoff, I broke my arm, and all these people got off. Wait, me. wait, wait. You kicked the ball, and you must have tried to make a tackle. Yeah, well, you I, made it. Yeah, I made it. I run and I break, I fall and break my arm. Wow. All the scouts literally got up, Get up and leave. stayed and left. Now, I know you're up, up here in, the, in, in Ohio. You probably never heard of Troy. Troy mm -hmm. State in Alabama. Mm -hmm. That was the only college that offered me a letter of intent to come to that school. Now, this is where it gets sticky and great. Mm -hmm. And I had to make a choice. I do what mama says. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All right. So you got to believe back in early 70s, my mom had never seen the two piece bathing suit guys. So we go up to Troy during the springtime drive up on campus, and everybody at Troy that's a female is out on the <laughs> campus suntan. <laughs> my mama told my dad, stop! And he stopped the car. He said, Rob, this is my dad. Turn the car around. Mm. In the car was Ricky Young and myself. Ricky played the Jackson with me in San Diego and all that. He said, turn the car around. They can't go to school here. These two cannot go to school here. Mm. I'm tired of it. We went back. The two weeks later, I get on the telephone and call my cousin, which was had played at Jackson State. I said, could you get his ball field? A could telephone call, say I want to come up and get a chance. Mm -hmm. See, will you give me a scholarship? My dad put us in the car two weeks later, we go up there and knock on Bob Hill's door. Bob Hill came out the door and said, nothing to me, nothing to my dad. Mm -hmm. He looked down at Ricky Jones' legs. He said, hey, son, can you block? I said, yes, sir. He said, can you catch anyway? He said, yeah. He said, and this is the first time I ever heard this name. He said, I finally got me a fool back to block for Walker Payton. That was the first time I heard wow. that. So I said, Cole, what about me? Being a blue chip and being sawed off, this is the first time these words have ever slapped me in the face. You got to make my team. Wow. 
I see no problem. So you get recruited by oh, all yeah. the SEC schools. You break your arm in the eighth game of the season, yeah. and the coach at Jackson State tells told you, me "I got to make his you team. got to make his team." I got to make his team, and that was the most, the best thing for Rob Brazil. Wow, ever. perseverance, perseverance again. So we go out. The summer, I'm having a hell of a camp. Mm -hmm. Everybody, <laughs> well, let's Bowl define Bowl. hell of a camp for a minute. You was wrecking folks. I was wrecking folks. <laughs> you were wrecking folks. I was kissing the ball on the tight end. They said when they gave me, I was wait. That's why I moved number eighty. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll, I know the stat. Yeah. I get the opportunity to play on the goon squad against Ricky and Walter, which was on offense. Mm -hmm. I'm in the roommate with these two. We got them. I'm tearing up practice. <laughs> tack it, tack it up. Thinking I'm gonna make the first road trip. They leave Jackson, go to Prairie View, and lose three linebackers mm. with knees. When that Bob Hill drove on campus, he came and knocked on my door to be ready to play next to tomorrow. Wow. And from then on, that line started right here. <laughs> never, never, never left the field. I never got never left. I had a, had a thing about me, I never missed a game. In, in college? No, in the pros. Or in the pros? No, never to miss the practice. Wow. Unless they made me stop. Right. But, you know, I, I right. get kind of vicious at time. So, <laughs> but that was the perseverance that got me over, was that I had to make his team. Wow. So you, so, so let's talk real quick about Walter Payton. So, so he is, he's, what, two years ahead of you? No, we in the same class. Yes. Same, same class, same draft. I mean, Walter was the first two number one ever to be drafted out oh of my class. Goodness. Walter went fourth and I went sixth in the first round. Um, and we both Hall of Famer. Wait, so so you got you got sweetness on one side and doom on the other side. Yes. And Jackie Slater in Atlanta. And Jackie Slater. Yeah. Um and Leon Gray that should be here. Yeah, so the question is, how good were y'all? Well, I hate for anybody, you know, when we, we went to the play in the East West Flying game and Bo Schambacher from Michigan was mm -hmm. our coach. And he was like, I said, Bo, we'd have played y'all and beat y'all. Wow. I said, matter of fact, I don't think y'all would cross the 50. Now, with that offense you run, I'd have made every time. We played in Nebraska, guys. And you can go back and look at Nebraska or Omaha, and they didn't cross out of 50. And we beat them 7-7 nothing. See, that's the point right there, though, right? The point is, and this actually leads me to the Black College Football Hall of Fame, right? Because what you just described, we know your name, we know Walter Payne's name, we know Jackie Slater's name, but the reality of it is, is there's so many great ball players that, that you could have said, you could, could say legitimately, we'd have whooped on Michigan. We whooped on Nebraska. We whooped on Michigan because that's how good we were. I'm and yes, yeah, yeah. Before you go too yeah, far, yeah, no, you're all right. We challenged Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Southern Mississippi. We played all of y'all. Put y'all team together. Y'all cannot cross our fifty. Bob Hill, we was we was we was that good, man. When I got to Houston and I saw my teammates that was there and people they was drafted, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say? <laughs> I, but luckily I had a person like Bob, Bob Phillips. Right. I said, Bob, I know where a tackle at that's playing up in New England, getting down here, Leon Gray. Mm -hmm. I know where a tight end that is washed up, they say, up in New York, getting a uh, Richard Caster. Mm -hmm. I know where a safety named Vernon Perry, which still holds the league's record for the most interceptions in a playoff game. He got four against San Diego. That record would never be broken. Mm -hmm. I said, go get it. They all became teammates at the Houston Hall. I think that's up. Because you knew what was happening. I knew what was happening. I knew there was a lot of players being overlooked. And that's just at Jackson. We're not going to talk about Doug and Graham. Yeah, Graham. Or Southern, Southern yeah. and Mel Blunt. Mel yeah. Blunt. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Houston and Prairie View yeah, and all these other people, man. It was so much talent. It was the SEC before the SEC was this Wow. Now. Wow, and 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 that's the point, really, of the Black College Football Hall of Fame. I that's mean, it. at the end of the day, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that. But at the end of the day, Doug and Shaq, 
I've had an opportunity to talk to them, and you've heard them multiple times. They said they started that Hall of Fame because of great players, not just like yourself, but all those players you name and all the coaches. Say it again, the coaches. The coaches that were at what are now historically black colleges. At the time, they were they were black schools, right? <laughs> right. They weren't. That's they weren't. The historical wasn't on there because it wasn't. So it was. So I had to talk to Dion, which took the job at Jackson, right? Right. I said, Dion, you're not the first NFL ball player that coached at Jackson. Exactly. I said, everybody <laughs> that coached me during the year I was there had played in the NFL. Exactly. Game. So you got to give credit where credit is due. I mean, my linebacker coach played, Bob Hill played, my defensive line coach, my offensive line coach, all these guys that played in the NFL before they came to Jackson. Mm -hmm. Now, did Dion have the right thing to do? Got yeah, sure. Right he, time. He, he, he ain't lost nothing. Right. Well, he he was he he was he he came on at the right time in the right scenario, in the right setting to make an impact. But the reality of it is, is that there were there are and there always have been great players, always. great coaches that have been at H HBCUs and 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 if anything, what what he did is is not just Jackson State highlighting it, but... Yeah, his, his answer, you finna tell it. He put us out there nationally. Absolutely. Because Everybody look, was talking about the SWAT, uh, HBCU, and Jackson State. Absolutely. Because Dion said. But think about this. Who, he, he, the last championship game, he, his last game that he lost, he lost to... Oh, uh, the North Carolina. North Carolina, North Carolina State. That's a heck of a coach over there. They got some ball players Hello. over there. Is that right? Because they won. They won. Right? And that, and that and guy is not I was a. at the game. It was no giveaway. They won. They, they won that game. The best team won. The best athlete was on the other side of the field. That's something. Right. And and so, and, and, and the great thing about that is, is we all got a chance to see not just Jackson State, but all these other coaches and players who have been persevering and working. Mm -hmm. They're incredibly terrible. hard, right? Well, and now terrible. they got an opportunity to share the spotlight. It's so true. And so that's true. and that's what the Black College Football Hall of Fame is all about. So I want to ask you: Do you remember? Do you remember? How did you find out that you were going to be inducted into the Black College Hall of Fame? Do you remember if Doug or Shaq called you? How did you How did you find out? I think it was Shaq. Shaq called. I you? think it was Shaq, and and the young guy that just. Retired. Marcus. Marcus. Yep. Marcus. Uh, Marcus Fitch. Called Marcus Fitch. Called me and said, "Okay, you know, because it's such an honor, man. Yeah. You know, you know, when you look at the names that's in the Black College Hall of Fame, and you look what they had, the impact that they had in the NFL and in college, mm -hmm. this is kind of, you know." The best of the best. The best of the best. You know, I always say that we took the Black College Hall of Fame and took some SEC or Alabama Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. We'll beat them. Mm. Well, take the Mississippi Hall of Fame. Here's your, here's your class. Yeah. Strand. Come on. Stallworth. Come on. Leroy Kelly. Again. You had Satellite Tolton, right? So Satellite throwing the ball to Jerry Rice. Right? <laughs> At Mississippi Valley us? State. Who's gonna stop you? Wilkerson, Kasem, Marino. All, that was your class. My class. Now here's the funny part about that. You ready? If I'm correct, you were class five. Yes. You were class five. I couldn't make the top. <laughs> you were class five. I understood. Of the Black and College Football Hall of Fame. The first right? class going the, the in. The first class <laughs> had Deacon in it. Right? Mr. Had, well, Doug and Shaq didn't even make the first class. Again. Right? That's how incredible the talent and the coaches are in the Black College Football Hall of Fame. That that pro football Hall of Famers like yourself had to wait. Had to wait. Had to wait. Had to, you gotta wait your turn. Had to wait to get voted in. <laughs> get voted in. Because there were so that, many, get, so many get great that vote. Ain't that something? I mean, it's too much raw talent, man. It was so much raw talent. And still a lot of talent that we are overlooking. We're trying to bring it up to date because it's guys that passed away mm -hmm. and don't mm -hmm. get a chance to sponge in this love, sponge in that care or that recognition that they deserve. Because any given day in the swag, you can lose. 
you know, I mean, I played against some guys that made me better, that made me who I am today. It wasn't like I was given this uh, 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 a win, no way. Mm -hmm. You played against the All I and mean, you played against mm -hmm. Jackson, I mean, uh, Valley, uh, mm -hmm. right there in Mississippi. This is war to get out of Mississippi. Don't even think about going over to Louisiana and win the game. Wow. <laughs> you wow. got the ground and Southern. Yeah. Then you go out to Texas, you got to take the Southern mm -hmm. bridge, dude. Come on, and, and all these Alabamas and AM and all that. I oh, mean, there's some talent that still need to be here. I hope we got enough room to put them Well, on. let's talk about that for a minute. So, so 2014, at that time, when Doug and Shaq started the Black College Football Hunter induction in, Al in Atlanta, but did you ever in your wildest dreams think that you were going to have two homes in Canada? Because no, no. in 2018, you get inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but two years earlier, there was a, 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 an agreement that said that the Pro Football Hall of Fame would, would host, <laughs> it would house the Black, Black College Football Hall of Fame. So now, your home is in Canton twice. How's that? How does that make you feel? It makes me feel so good because some of my colleagues, some of my colleagues that's deserve a gold mm -hmm. jacket mm -hmm. are here with a black jacket. Yeah. Some of my colleagues that should be recognized on every level in the Pro Football Hall of Fame is in here somewhere. And it's gonna get bigger. Mm -hmm. And people will realize how much great talent that I played against, played with, and sharing this, how both of these Hall of Fame with. Man, when you think about the whole big picture of what, what you just said, when you think about the people that's here and the people that need to come here, this legacy will go on yeah. and on and snowball as it go. And we should all be grateful for what is being done at the Pro Football Hall of Fame to hire both black college and, and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, I tell you what, we're proud to, to honor both legacies. Yeah, and, I know and, I am. And it is, it is truly an honor for uh, Canton to call the Black College Football Hall of Fame home. It is, it is truly an honor, it is an honor. for us. And, it's a, and, and of course, you know, when we get finished with this, our goal, just like your Pro Football Hall of Fame legacy, is to preserve your Black College Football Hall of Fame legacy and all of those guys that you played with. Now, one of the things that that I, I really appreciate about you is that you come back. You you come. Canton is truly your second home. True. And and not only do you come back for um, enshrinement week, you came. You came, you came to the Classic. You come to the Classic. Yes. And, and, and let me just be clear. In 2019, we started the Black College Football mm -hmm. Hall of Fame Classic with the goal of, again, highlighting and spotlighting the great uh, colleges and universities and the great players such as yourself and others uh, here in Canton with a game on, on Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And you come back for that. Um, what, does, what does the fact that the Hall of Fame has created a, a, a classic that brings HBCUs to Canton, has it on national TV, spotlights the great players like yourselves. What does that mean to you and why do you come back every year? It says something about the people that went through these HBCUs, man. We are so proud and so honored for the things that people are doing for us. And for it to work, we have to be here, I mean, you know, this is this is for me. This is not just for anyone that this is my legacy. This is what I want to be. I am, you know, I want to be proud to say I got a black jacket, gold yes. jacket, and I want other people to show up to make this thing great. You know, we can't. That's one thing I've learned about me as a person. You can talk to walk, but until you go do it, touch it, and be a part of, you ain't did nothing. A word is a word. Yeah. Action is much better than word. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Action is much better than me. Well, I, I tell you what, it, is, it has been a great opportunity to just sit and reflect with Robert Brazil, the great Dr. Doom, right? Who, who let me just say, um, when you hear the word Dr. Doom, you should be fearful, 
But when you get to learn the man under that helmet, you don't have nothing to fear. In fact, the only thing you don't get is a gentleman, a man with class, a man with integrity, a man who represents his family and represents both the Black College Football Hall of Fame and the Pro Football Hall of Fame with honor. Right. So I just want you to know. Well, I'm gonna tell you something about Dr. Doom. You know, I, I've always said this, and I told my mother first, if I buckle up, mother, do not come to that house. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> so anybody else, when I buckle up, I'm Dr. Doom. When I unbuckle, I'm not Brazil. <laughs> Well, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. So I appreciate much, it. Man. Thank you.